Hello, so the cutlass I ordered arrived because um, I don't know if any of you remember me saying but I said, you know, I've not got a cutlass, so I'd like to get a cutlass. So I ended up getting this windless steel craft one. There was a Chinese sword I was also interested in, but um, unfortunately they were all out of stock. So what this is, um, is a windless steel craft reproduction of a US M1860 naval cutlass, or just the M1860 cutlass. Um, so this is sort of American Civil War era sort of style cutlass. Um, so obviously I'll get out the scabbard. It's got a really nice sort of scabbard built into sort of a leather frog type thing on this one uh, for bout sort of, you know, use. But yeah, there we go. So there's the cutlass. So I'm really actually impressed with this. You can see it's still quite oily because it's got the original sort of oil coat on it. So I got it from Southern Swords and I ordered this. I think it was last week. It came this week as of when I'm filming the video. So it says... Um, a M E S M F G C O Chiopi Mass or something. Word I don't understand. There on the blade there. And the other side just says USA DR 1862. I'm pretty sure it's called the M1860 cutlass, though, not the 1862 cutlass, but never mind. Unless that's meant to look like it's an actual, you know, reproduction of a sort of serial type thing I had on it. But yeah, this is very well balanced, um, very easy to control. Um, and this is probably now one of my favourite swords, despite the fact it's one of my newest. So, some of you might think this looks quite familiar, and you'd be right if you think that. Now, unfortunately, if you're left-handed, you might struggle to use this because of how the hilt's designed. Because um, it's got one of those quite nice sort of clam... what do they call them? Clamshell hilts? But, you know, to protect your hand from incoming blades, and it would certainly give it a lot of protection there. But, what uh, this is similar to, if I get it out of its scabbard, and I want to do that without knocking anything over, is this one, which is the uh, 1860 Heavy Cavalry Sabre that Windlass do. Um, so basically, if you look at these, what both of these were, were basically the Sabre and the Cutlass that basically America, the Union, was making at the same time. So, Cutlasses, oh, this would be a good thing to explain in this video, the difference between Cutlasses and Sabres. Obviously, you can see the Sabres are a fair bit bigger. But cutlasses were basically designed for use in naval warfare, sort of ship fighting. The idea being if people boarded ships and, you know, had to fight, you wanted something compact that was easy to control. That's what a cutlass does. A sabre um, is generally much bigger and it's designed to be used by cavalry from horseback and you generally get uh, heavy cavalry sabres and light cavalry sabres. Um, but the idea of a sabre is basically as you ride past on a horse, you cut down infantry with it. Um, the cutlass's job obviously is hand-to-hand -hand fighting, sort of in close quarters. So, they're both sort of slightly similar curved blade designs, but sabres are generally longer with more of a curve. Um, cutlasses are obviously designed so you can thrust of them pretty efficiently as well. So out of the two, obviously, yeah, you would get a lot more control out of the cutlass. Uh, and in a minute, we're just going to give it a quick test, because um, it came in a nice cardboard box. I've got a cardboard box to uh, annihilate with it. And we'll see how well it manages to do that. Uh, I paid to have them put an edge on it, and it feels like they've done a pretty good job on that. Um, obviously, I don't want to run my finger along it too hard. But with the um, windless steel craft blades, they basically come blunt, sort of for reenacting use, and then you can sort of generally most of the places like Southern Swords you buy them from, you can pay to have them sharpened for about thirty pounds, which isn't bad if you felt confident enough and you had the tools, you could do it yourself. But you know, I don't really like um, the idea of getting a brand new sword and then trying to put my own edge on it. Um, so yeah, this all looks very good. Sort of out of all the swords I've got, the profile of this is most similar to the falchion, I would say, in terms of how easy it is to control and sort of how the weight and balance feels like. And that makes sense because both were sort of swords designed for similar use, thrusting and chopping. So what we'll do, let's not uh, waste any more time talking about it. Let's go and get the um, box and let's chop it up. Right, hopefully the majority of this is in frame um, and because the box hasn't got any weight in it I don't know if this is going to work. I'm not going to be able to thrust very well at this angle. I think that will just pop. I did manage to get it at the end. The problem is it will just knock the box open. But um, yeah, let me just stand this back up and then we'll just try some overhead chops on it. Because as I said, this box, you know, I'd need to tape it back up which is a bit pointless just to chop it up if I wanted it to stay really well together. But I'm sure when all the Corona lockdown stuff is over, um, I'll do a video of Weapon Collector and we'll make good use out of this cutlass with milk bottles and things like that. But let's try an overhead chop. I want to be careful because I've not got loads of room in here. But Oh yeah, look at that. Wow. 
Yeah, this is that quite thick packaging cardboard and it's managed to gash into that side absolutely fine. And that wasn't much of a strike, as in because I've got loads of stuff around me and I'm indoors, I didn't want to. So let's try that again. I'll get as much of a chop down as I can. Yeah, again, goes through easily. Yeah, very impressed with that. Again, it might not look that impressive because I'm indoors doing it, but the point is, yeah, wow, that is good. Yeah, I've had machetes before that aren't that good at going into these sort of boxes. So anyway, um, I'll have to completely cut this box up, but yeah, the point is that... Although you're not meant to use these in a storing fashion, yeah, they um, it does a good job. So I'll show you some close-ups of the sword and then that will be it for this video, but yeah, very impressed with this. Right, let's try a first-person thing where I basically hold the sword like that. Yep. So it's some sort of carbon sort of spring steel the blade's made from, so obviously it's designed to take impacts and bend. Um, but yeah, all in all, I'm very impressed. Uh, for the price of these, uh, they're under £200. These are very, very good sabers, uh, sorry, cutlasses. And the nice thing is, if I hold it at this angle, look, you can see the curvature of the blade there, but you can still thrust all out of this, unlike the um, sabers, because you can thrust the sabers, but it's difficult, because, you know, the point doesn't go where you think it's going to go. But yeah, with the cutlass, obviously, the idea is that I think the point kind of comes a bit back around rather than going, you know, higher than where you expect it to be. So yeah, this is alright. Again, a perfectly straight sword is always still better for thrusting, but this thrusts well enough for what it is. You know, I was quite surprised when I thrust into the box that I managed it at such a shit angle. And in terms of uh, cutting, yeah, with barely any force applied to that, it goes straight through that sort of thick shipping cardboard stuff. So, um, yeah, this would uh, do sort of milk jugs and stuff like that absolutely fine. So, yeah, hopefully at some point in the future you'll see this used again in a video.